let's look at the files on my hard disk. You can see I have uh, a directory named Google Apps and within it I have lots of subdirectories. The one we're interested in mostly here is the one named CRUD. And right below it is the other one that's more advanced. In App Engine terminology, the directory named CRUD is a root directory for the App Engine app. Here I've got my text editor open and I want to open some files and so I'm going to select these files, uh, these four files to look at more closely in my editor. Now I want to increase the page size here. Because of the small print you may not be able to read the file name. It's called app.yaml. This file is like a digital table of contents for any Google application. The first line says that the application's name is CRUD, and it is named CRUD on my computer. Actually, the lowercase CRUD is what is used. When my grandson deployed his app, he had to change the name from CRUD to Reminder Maker in order to get a unique name. And so he had to change the word CRUD in this file before it could be deployed correctly. The next file we'll look at is main.py. You can see up there now. A little peculiarity of App Engine is that in this app YAML file, that name has to be main.app here instead of main.py. You'll have to get used to that peculiarity. That's about the only thing that's difficult to uh, understand on this page. Now we're looking at the file models.py. Uh, the top line tells us that we have to import uh, the database application library from Google App before we can define the database as we do here. There's only one database in this case and it's named notes because this is the simple crud where only one kind of uh, file is required. Remember there was an author name, some text, priority level, status, and a date which was automatically created by the application. Corresponding to the four letters of CRUD, there are four s routines here in the view file. You can call them views, actually. You can see that the first one is main page. That's really the one where that it, we, it corresponds to read. There's create note, which corresponds to creating. Edit note corresponds to updating. And there's one down below for delete. Each view has potentially two sections, a get section and a post section. Create has both, but the read only has a get because it's only reading. Delete has only a get also, and you can see the other part of edit note. Notice that the gets and posts for the first two, main page and create note, only require a self as the argument. In contrast, the gets and posts for um, the other two require both self and note ID. The identifying number for each note. That's something for you to puzzle over. Now we're at the top of the views pi. Notice that the first five lines import things from outside of this application. But this one right here, importantly, imports from the other file named models. This has to be done because information in the models file is needed here in the views file. And in other places you'll see that. I've highlighted this next section. It's all boilerplate that makes 
the template system work better with something called Jinja 2. Jinja 2 is very helpful and you may want to look up its documents on the web. But you're learn likely to learn a lot by just looking at the HTML files uh, in this application and look for the curly bracket parts of the HTML. That's the G Jinja code. Back now in the CRUD subdirectory called templates, we see the four HTML files. They correspond to CRUD. Well, not really. The index file is the same as the read file, but the base file is a boilerplate file that helps the other three to work because the read file is really both a read and an update. I'm sorry, it's the edit file that's both an edit and a delete. And here in the static directory we have the cascading style files that help to format the HTML.